Hello friends, it's Carla, your online doctor with today's Live in 5. Today is uh, Friday, October 16th at 5 p.m. My computer is barely working. It is just turning on. It's been about 10 minutes. So, I'm doing this on my phone. Hopefully I will not get any phone calls. It is pouring here in South Florida. So hopefully it, you, wherever you are, you are staying dry. If you are down in South Florida, good luck with that one. Okay, so this talk is gonna be today and Monday. It was supposed to be yesterday and today, but because I didn't do my live on Monday, we're, um, we're splitting this one up. Okay, so whether inside hospitals or in the streets, face masks are one of the most effective tools in the battle against COVID-19. If you do not believe me and you are still not interested in wearing a mask, please do not comment. Don't say anything negative. Just a scroll right past. You're entitled to your opinion, but this is what we're talking about today. Okay, states with mask mandates have seen drops in COVID cases, yet not all masks are created equal, varying in not only efficacy, but comfort. Okay, so let's compare some of the most common options. Again, today and Monday we'll be talking about this. So number one, we're gonna talk about neck gaiters, those kind of scarfy looking things that people pull up. They're made of highly breathable, stretchy fabric worn over the neck, mouth, and nose. Now a study done at by Duke University originally showed that there is an increase in viral transmission when using these. But the study was actually heavily criticized for its simplicity. And more recent research indicates that doubling the layers actually blocks about 90% of all measured particles. So most of those things are just too flimsy. They're too thin, they're very breathable, making them very comfortable, but very ineffective. So doubling them, creating two layers, um, will increase your chance of blocking out some of the viruses. Number two, bandanas, okay? The same Duke study showed they only reduce droplets by a factor of two. So better than nothing, but not by much, okay? So if you've got nothing else, yes, definitely wear it. Again, you may wanna double the layers or triple the layers of the bandana, but still not very effective. Okay, number three, masks with those exhalation valves or the vents, they usually have a little thing on the side um, making them kind of look robotic of sorts. These masks are designed to protect the wearer from getting infected by others, okay? Ideally, it's used by um, industrial laborers to minimize exposure to chemicals, particles, and other work-related elements due to um, the valve that's in them, they allow droplets to escape, okay? The whole purpose of the valve is to make it more comfortable for the wearer to breathe, okay? But if you are the one infected and you're wearing a mask with a valve, then those droplets are escaping through the valve and can actually promote viral transmission. They've actually been banned by many airlines, hospitals, and major US cities. So if that's your favorite mask and that's the one you're wearing, Remember, you're not helping anybody else. If you are uh, asymptomatic, you don't know, or you have symptoms and you happen to just have to run out and get something, that's not the ideal mask to wear to protect others. It does protect you, but it doesn't protect others if you're the infected person. Number four, cloth masks. Now these are homemade or purchased. Um, they may harbor COVID-19 on the cloth for up to two days. So they do encourage people to wash them on a daily basis. That's a personal choice or hang them up somewhere. Make sure you use proper technique in taking your mask off. Don't touch the outside and then touch your face, all that standard stuff. Um, but those viruses, again, can be killed by cleaning or disinfecting the mask. So you can also spray them with a safe spray cleaner or in my case, I would use something from um, Young Living, the company that I trust, their cleaner or one of their essential oils, I might spray on it for, for benefits to me. But 
Um, again, don't spray bleach on your mask. Don't spray Lysol on your mask. Don't use all of those chemicals because now you're going to put it back on your face and you're going to be breathing in all of that nastiness. So best thing is to put it in the washing machine and wash it. Now, the more breathable your mask um, may negatively correlate with the ability to block droplets. Okay, so I'm not saying you should be suffocating in your mask, but if you feel it's extremely comfortable and it's so easy to breathe, think about the quality or the, the level of uh, efficacy that you might be getting for particles in and particles out. Number five would be enhanced cloth masks. Now you can increase the efficiency of a cloth mask by increasing the number of fabric layers. Okay, the World Health Organization recommends three layers to effectively block droplets similar to a surgical mask. Now the type of material used makes a difference as well. So non-woven polymer polypropylene offers the highest filtration. So that's what they talk about. Now if you also have a mask that has a pocket inside, you can buy filters. Again, they're not 100%, they don't cover the entire surface, but it's just, again, another layer to prevent anything from passing through the material to you. Number six are surgical masks, okay? These are disposable surgical masks are made of non-woven, multi-layered fabric. They undergo a standardized testing to ensure that they have adequate filtration and breathability. Okay, so that's very important. Obviously, if you're in the operating room, you wanna make sure you can breathe through your mask because you wear them for hours and hours. And they protect against fluid penetration and their um, and flammability. A standard surgical mask reduces COVID risk by um, about 65%. And the more form-fitting, the better. So the COVID virus has been shown to remain on these masks for anywhere up to seven days. So again, be careful when removing these and disposing of them. They are meant to be disposed of. These are masks I see people wearing all the time over and over and over and over and over again. That's why, you, in my opinion, you might be better off with a cloth, cloth mask, one you can wash or spray or do whatever because these disposable masks are meant to be disposed of. So just keep that in mind. And lastly for today, number seven, filtering face piece respirators. These are in, include the N95 masks. Now the N95 means it filters 95% or more of airborne particles. They also filter smaller particles down to 0.075 micrometers. Those are solid particles. Um, Healthcare workers are actually fitted for these to guarantee efficacy. So if you um, are a healthcare worker and you can get access to these form fitted to your face so that nothing gets through. Um, <clears throat> these masks actually come with a price. They are described as suffocating and uncomfortable and difficult to tolerate for long durations and can result in facial bruising and abrasions. Yes, I used to wear these for certain procedures in the operating room and I would come out after even just 30 minutes with a horrible rash all along the surface of where the mask sat on my face. So if, you're, if your mask does not fit firmly to your face, then it's no different than wearing any of the other less effective masks. Okay, so make sure if you have a N95 or a KN95, if that's the one you use, we're gonna talk about that on Monday, you wanna make sure that it kind of has a seal on your face. And again, wearing them for long periods of time can be a little bit uncomfortable and suffocating. So again, it just depends on what you want. If you wanna have that guarantee or a higher guarantee that less particles are getting in and out, go for it. So that's what I have for you today. We're gonna to finish this talk up on Monday. I hope you stay dry. I hope you have a great weekend. And as I said, I will see you again on Monday for another Live in Five.